getting a signal. Ah, there we go. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so what I mean by this is uh, I feel like uh, Fire is the perfect delivery vehicle for LOINC encoded health data content. And you'll sort of figure out a little bit more about what I mean by that as we go along. I'm going to try to do three things. I'm going to give like a real brief introduction to what LOINC as a terminology is. We're going to take a little bit of a tour uh, through the, the Fire specification to see where we can encounter LOINC sort of out in the wild in the Fire jungle. And then uh, we'll end up by talking about some of the LOINC specific features uh, that you can use in the Fire terminology services part of the specification. I want to mention uh, that uh, the session exercise, you can go, I think, uh, on the main uh, conference site, you'll be able to get to it, or uh, from my website, uh, just danielvreeman.com slash fire, that'll take you there. And this will work through all of the examples when we get to the fire terminology section, and there'll be actually a whole bunch more that are in this exercise. So if you're really interested in geeking out with that, um, not only can you get these slides, um, and they're linked in this post as well, uh, but uh, there are a number of exercises that you can uh, work your way through. So two uh, things I want to mention uh, before we dive in. First, I'm uh, president of a company that published a book about LOINC, and I'm PI on a contract, uh, well, essentially all the contracts that uh, fund LOINC development, one of which is from a commercial uh, entity, but most of LOINC development is funded by federal and other uh, nonprofit uh, funding sources. Uh, as we get started, I wanted to just get a quick sense of who we have here in the room. So if you had to answer the question, uh, what is your familiarity with LOINC? How many would you say, would say, not much, I'm pretty new? Okay, good, good, uh, relatively new, relatively new, okay. All right, and then I'm an advanced LOINCer. Not to say advanced in age, that doesn't mean <laughs> that, just advanced loinking, right? <laughs> right, okay, good, good. Uh, so, so then this will be uh, helpful, I think, for those of you who are on the newer end of the spectrum. So I want to share a little bit about Loink's uh, superhero origin story. And it starts with a problem that you'll encounter essentially everywhere that you have health data. Uh, and back in the mid-90s when we were trying to build a health information exchange around central Indiana, we uh, started getting data flowing with good old HL7 version 2 messages, and of course you peek inside those messages and what do you see? You see lots of variation, right? I mean, you can look at this list and these are just a small sample of the different ways that you might express a pretty common uh, arterial uh, diastolic blood pressure concept. And to humans, maybe it's not so much of a, of a problem because you can sort of look at that list and say, yeah, okay, I know these are all uh, blood pressures and so forth, but for computers, obviously, that's a huge problem. And uh, the problem uh, is getting worse. So if you are of a certain age uh, or a musical genre disposition, you might remember the hip-hop song from the mid-90s, uh, More Money, More Problems by uh, the Notorious B.I.G. Um, I think we're sort of now in the realm uh, of uh, a song that we need, which is more data, more problems, right? Because the issue that I showed on that first slide of all these different variations just continues to proliferate the broader the set of information and systems that you're interacting with, right? And uh, so FHIR helps solve a, an important part of that problem, uh, but uh, we need some other uh, solutions as well. So I like to say, you know, it's, it's like uh, the more data we come across, the more problems we see. You encounter two types of problems, right? The first is that different health IT systems lack common mechanisms for exchanging data, and that's, of course, what FHIR goes a long ways uh, to helping address. But the second part of the issue is, the second type of problem is that even if they do have these common mechanisms, often these systems will have different ways of identifying the same concept. And so that was sort of the whole idea, the genesis behind which uh, LOINC was, was created, and why we continue to develop it today. So LOINC is a, um, a universal standard for identifying health measurements, observations, and collections of those in the form of documents or panels. Today, the vocabulary has what I call sort of a rich trove of more than 87,000 or so different variables that really span kind of the whole spectrum of uh, kinds of observations that you'll see in healthcare, all the way from one end, which might be uh, genetic data, um, all the way up to uh, environmental data, 
um, about a patient's uh, lifestyle, their behavior, and the sort of situations in which they, uh, they live and work. And kind of in the middle are maybe a lot of the things that you'll uh, start to be more familiar with. So on the one hand, yeah. As the, uh, the mic appears to be on again, yeah, that's good. Okay, maybe we'll get our, ah, there we go. It was there, awesome. All right, so, uh, so yeah, we've got genetic data, we've got lifestyle data, we've got the sort of meat of what's in most EHR systems, a laboratory tests, you know, uh, two thirds of the Blank database covers this stuff, um, but other factors as well. And so I want to sort of mention specifically that LOINC is kind of focused on one part of the, uh, the sort of health vocabulary space. That is, we're focused on observations and collections of them. But in lots of other contexts, you're going to need and will encounter other terminologies uh, to cover things like diagnoses, medications, uh, or reimbursement use cases. So LOINC's focus, main area, is on measurements, um, that, that particular part of the puzzle. And from the beginning, LOINC was designed specifically to be observation identifiers. That's what the OI in LOINC stands for, originally in the context of things like uh, HL7 version 2 and early ASTM standards and so forth. Uh, but it works equally well regardless of the, the sort of format or the mechanism. So version 2, CDA, FHIR, anywhere you have this idea where you want to express an observation that's going to take a value and you want to uniquely identify what is this thing that's being uh, recorded, that's where LOINC comes in. And we do that by creating codes uh, and assigning names to help distinguish among the key differentiating factors. And uh, this won't be on your exam uh, before lunch, uh, but briefly <laughs> there are uh, sort of six main uh, pieces of the LOINC name. There's the component, which is the thing that you're measuring, the analyte, the substance, or in this case, something like body height, uh, the property, which helps distinguish among things like length or mass concentrations uh, or counts, uh, the timing, the system, which is really the unit of observation, laboratory tests, you think that's the specimen, uh, serum, plasma, et cetera, uh, the scale to distinguish quantitative from ordinal and categorical variables, and then the last attribute is uh, the method, which is the only one that's optional. We call these different attributes parts, and the attribute values uh, are coded as well. We'll cover that in a second. So remember that those, then when I say a LOINC part, that I'm talking about sort of a piece uh, of the, uh, the LOINC name and attribute value there. So we also create codes that represent collections of individual observations. So you think of something like the CBC uh, with differential. You've got sort of an order uh, item at the top, and it comes back with a whole set of uh, results. Uh, but we use that same construct for lots of different uh, kinds of collections, whether you're talking about a survey instrument uh, or a form, um, which have sort of these enumerated set of items underneath them, or more loose collections uh, such as documents. And so there's a whole set of terms in LOINC around radiology procedures uh, and clinical note titles uh, and so forth as well. So codes both for individual observations and then for collections of them. Uh, a little bit newer uh, evolution is the, the ability that we have to connect LOINC observation codes with sets of uh, answer items that might serve as observation values. And uh, we have a structure for kind of hooking those two things together. We define a list uh, and in many cases we'll enumerate the list of choices, give them codes and so forth. Uh, and this sort of grew up in the context of uh, survey instruments and patient reported outcomes measures where we needed to sort of package together the question and allowed responses in order to even make any sense of what that observation meant. Um, but we've extended this mechanism across lots of areas of law and can find it pretty handy. So just as an example, what does this look like? So you have a, 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 an instrument like the Morse Fall Scale. One of the items in that instrument is for mental status, uh, but when I when I'm doing uh, mental status as an observation in the Morse Fall Scale, this isn't just like some general mental status concept. There, it's a very specific sort of set of uh, criteria that I'm assigning. And basically, there's two choices, and they each get a different score value. And so we can kind of bundle that together to say, oh, when I'm doing Morse Fall mental status, this is uh, the set of responses that I need. So the, the whole LOINC release has a number of different uh, artifacts or files. Uh, which you may or may not uh, uh, need. Um, and uh, looks like we got a, maybe a loose cable somewhere. Or, 
the, uh, ah, we're back. All right, this just keeps you paying attention, right? You never know what's going to happen. The lights are going to be next, you know. This is, this is great. Um, so be aware that there are many files, some of which I'll show you uh, uh, in how we sort of transform them into uh, fire resources, uh, but you may not need all of it. Uh, and so we have sort of a pick and choose model. Uh, each of them uh, comes with a pretty detailed readme and release notes, uh, so you can uh, dive in in more detail to sort of figure out what those are. But there are se separate files for the hierarchy, for our document stuff, for um, uh, the radiology things, as well as uh, the answer lists uh, that I just was showing you before. Lunk publishes two major releases each year, June and December. We just uh, uh, released our uh, June one uh, Friday, so uh, I'm glad that I could make it here alive, uh, and it went out successfully. So, um, so you can look for another one in December, but we're hot off the presses now. And we keep adding content based on end user requests. So the new tests, the new items that get added are all driven by uh, the Lunk user community who uh, makes requests when they find gaps in the terminology. Today, there are about 64,000 or so users of Loink uh, coming from about 172 different countries. And last year, about 16,000 or so new users uh, were added. And so really, sort of in every nook and cranny uh, around uh, the planet, or most nooks and crannies around the planet, you'll find a Loink uh, user. I want to mention that Loink itself is licensed with a relatively open model that's free for use anywhere in the world forever going forward for both commercial and non-commercial uh, purposes. There's a way that we support uh, translation. There are actually lots of different uh, linguistic variants of LOINC. Um, really, as you sort of read through the LOINC license, there are lots of different parts, but there's really one main prohibition or one thing that you're not allowed to do with LOINC, and that is you can't use it to develop a different standard for orders or observations, which is the whole purpose of why we created LOINC uh, in the first place. That's really the only thing you can't do. Uh, and uh, you might be wondering, you've seen a few slides with pigs. I have a pig on my laptop. What's with the pig? Essentially, it's just for fun. Loink, loink sort of sounds the same. Uh, hence, the pig is our mascot. It has uh, just really for fun. So uh, if you successfully complete all the exercises and want to get your hands on a loink sticker, you have to come find me. All right. So the next part, I want to give a brief sort of tour of where uh, in the fire specification and your interaction with fire resources, you might encounter LOINC. So clearly, uh, in sort of the diagnostic medicine module, observation is sort of the main sort of place where you're going to find LOINC, right? So LOINC is, a, is widely used as a code system for observations. Uh, here, you know, is an example showing a hemoglobin measurement. The LOINC code is identifying that particular uh, laboratory test. And in this case, it's a numeric result with a specific value and units of measure that are also coded using the, the UCOM standard. So you can do fun things like say, hey, I want to find the particular uh, test or observation for my patient um, and you know, pass that in uh, to, your, uh, to your fire server query and, and pull back uh, that observation using a LOINC code to identify it. Of course, the same thing works uh, just as well for coded response values. So I mentioned this idea of uh, answer lists and whether you use uh, LOINC answer lists or you use another terminology or, or structure for handling that, it works the same way. Uh, here's an example of a, uh, a SIP uh, gene product uh, metabolic activity interpretation where that interpretation of normal metabolizer is reported as a coded value. Um, using uh, LA codes, which is the LOINC answer code. So, of course, uh, observation, and there are many sort of profiles that uh, also sort of exist and have further constrained uh, the use of uh, the observation resource that identify specific LOINC codes to use. So some of the ones that you might be aware of in the FHIR uh, specification that are under development now are the one for uh, clinical genetic reporting, um, also for vital signs and so forth. And in these uh, profiles, you know, there's, there are sort of more specific definitions, including sort of bindings to particular LOINC codes. And so in the genomics one, there's a, a profile for doing an amino acid change type, and that's linked up to the LOINC code, uh, which has that exact same uh, sort of meaning. So you'll find uh, profiles that want to further constrain um, things using LOINC codes as well. In addition, you might want to use LOINC in the context of creating goals. So 
uh, uh, for example, if you're trying to express a patient goal where the goal is to achieve a particular value on a target measure, identifying what that target measure is, such as a body weight, um, you can set that goal context and say, oh, what I'm looking for is a, is a measured weight that is uh, whatever your, uh, your target is there. So again, you can use it in that, that context as well. Diagnostic reports. Um, so here, uh, diagnostic reports are, include uh, findings and interpretations of diagnostic text, tests. There are some mix of um, atomic results, textual descriptions, uh, formatted uh, representation for these things. And really, uh, you know, diagnostic reports, you'll find them for lab stuff, packaging together, uh, radiology, other diagnostic services as well. And uh, LOINC serves very well to identify what uh, that report contains, whether it's a laboratory panel or another kind of collection of information. In addition, um, the imaging study resource uh, often will be referenced uh, in a diagnostic report. And so where a, a diagnostic report is going to contain the document with narrative, maybe some key images and so forth, the imaging study includes uh, the, uh, the series and the image objects and so forth. And uh, the sort of recommended or, or main sort of binding of what the procedure codes are for um, imaging studies is our combined work with RSNA to develop the, the LOINC RSNA radiology playbook. So there's a set of terms that represent uh, imaging procedures that you can use uh, in this context as well. Um, I'll also mention over in the uh, foundation model module the, uh, the questionnaire and response resources. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with LOINC or only know about LOINC from a laboratory context, you might have missed that there was uh, this set of uh, LOINC concepts for these things as well. Um, but there's actually a really sort of rich data model in LOINC for representing uh, collections of uh, data elements, bonding to answers, score values, and so forth. And uh, we've been gradually expanding the content uh, in LOINC to, to, I don't know, over the last 10 years or so. And uh, there are now more than like 10,000 different variables that, that represent, for example, the items uh, that CMS requires on patient assessment instruments in post-acute care, things like the PHQ-9 for depression screening, uh, and all sorts of things like that. And this, uh, that sort of representation in LOINC could be used to generate uh, questionnaires and, and code up uh, the questionnaire responses uh, in, uh, in this FHIR resource. Composition, of course, is the structure that helps you build uh, FHIR documents, which are sort of immutable bundles that have a tested narrative. And uh, in the CDA world, many of you might be familiar with LOINC codes for document types. They're sort of the required bindings for things uh, such as progress notes or discharge summaries. Uh, uh, the CCD document and so forth. And so in uh, the CDA implementation guides, codes for document type as well as codes for section are, all, are often uh, identified uh, with LOINC codes. And that same sort of set of things applies uh, in FHIR world when you're thinking of creating compositions. Um, so, uh, so LOINC codes serve a, a, a nice role there in identifying uh, clinical documents as well as uh, sections within uh, those documents. Um, so uh, what can you do if you have stuff that's coded with LOINC? I just want to give you like three quick examples uh, of uh, LOINC-powered uh, fire innovations. And no, we don't actually have our own wine yet, but uh, it's, you know, maybe on my bucket list of, you know, career objectives would be something like that, but no. Um, but just as an example, so, you know, drawing on the idea of uh, observations uh, coded with something that you can understand um, across different vendor platforms. For example, in the Smart App Gallery, um, there are risk calculators, uh, and this one is uh, developed by, uh, by Cerner, but it calculates the ACC and AHA guidelines for assessing cardiovascular risk. And how does it do that? Well, it's based on reading in uh, a bunch of uh, sort of core data elements about a particular patient and then calculating uh, that risk score. And if you look inside it, how does it know what observations should go into this calculation. Um, you know, it's using, uh, identifying the observations by specific LOINC codes that apply, whether it's the systolic blood pressure uh, or the cholesterol values and so forth. Um, but this is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, having uh, more widely deployed common terminologies 
makes, uh, makes possible and much easier when it's combined with a data model that, uh, such as FHIR that these applications can understand. Um, there's another interesting one which is uh, uh, developed by the National Library of Medicine called uh, LHC Forms and essentially this is a, uh, a set of, uh, it's a, a JavaScript uh, widget that helps render data, en uh, data entry forms based on uh, panels or forms or questionnaires as defined by LOINC and expressed in FHIR. So essentially because we have a whole collection of codes uh, that represent a variety of different forms, you can have a simple sort of data capture screen. Uh, you don't have to understand the different nuances and structures of the PHQ-9 versus the promise items versus uh, whichever other instrument you're, in, you're thinking of deploying. It has kind of the same look and feel. And uh, this application sort of presents these things and then can write out um, as uh, fire diagnostic reports the set of questionnaire uh, responses. And of course, uh, everyone is, uh, you know, have heard about probably by now in the opening keynote, uh, excited about uh, Apple's use of Fire uh, to be able to pull in data from multiple different healthcare institutions. And they've based that implementation on the Argonaut Fire profile, which, uh, which requires link codes for observations uh, where there are relevant codes. And so uh, inside of uh, this stuff will be uh, link coded observations. So I want to wrap up now and talk uh, specifically about sort of accessing LOINC content from the FHIR terminology services uh, point of view. And so you can think of this as a little bit of, uh, you know, cool tricks with LOINC uh, through FHIR's terminology services. And again, you can follow along with some of the examples or dig in uh, later uh, if, you, if you go to the exercise. I, for one, am pretty excited about the possibilities here because it, um, it enables a set of capabilities that were actually a lot harder to do before uh, the fire specification came along. Um, and uh, of course that applies to maybe a lot of things, uh, but particularly in the, uh, the terminology context. Um, over the last couple of months, we've partnered with, uh, with James and the folks at Smile CDR to make some of this uh, uh, possible and now available in the Happy Fire uh, uh, code base. And so, um, you can uh, do this yourself uh, if, you, if you want to, and I'll be showing some examples uh, uh, of that. At Reagan Shreve, as sort of the, the purveyors of LOINC, we're in the process of deploying a set of terminology services um, in conjunction with our current release. It's a little bit of a work in progress, but uh, it is live, and uh, you, can, uh, you can try it out this week while you're here, ask questions, poke around. Um, you all are getting sort of an early peek uh, at this uh, here in this session, but the base URL that will apply to the later examples is uh, uh, fire.loink.org. So uh, what are the resources in the terminology services section that we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about code system, value set, uh, and concept map. So Loink as a code system, of course, uh, there's, uh, you know, Loink has been used within the fire terminology services for a long time. We've been working with Graham and others to develop a canonical definition which expands the set of properties and information that's available that's specific to LOINC. Uh, so each terminology has slightly different models of representing information. I showed you our sort of six-part naming structure as, as, as some of those things. And uh, so the implementation here we're sort of referencing is uh, available as an XML file that, uh, that is uh, from the LOINC, uh, the LOINC website. So that tells you sort of what properties and filters and so forth are available. Basically, uh, for all of the, the coding systems, you know, uh, loink.org is the, the URI, and then the codes, the main loink codes, codes for loink parts, codes for loink answer lists, and codes for uh, loink answers are all available in sort of that global loink code system resource. And uh, the, the display name for a long term when you pull it back is the, uh, the long, long common name. But as I mentioned, in that canonical definition, we tried to express a, whole, uh, a larger set of properties uh, for each long term. And so uh, not only just sort of code and name, but uh, here are some of the other uh, properties that are available. So the breakdown of the, the formal name uh, in terms of component property, et cetera, as well as uh, uh, some categories, for example, the class and class type. And uh, there are ways to sort of hook up um, link codes to answer lists. 
we've enumerated uh, two sort of special sets of properties for our more fine-grained uh, information model. So there are a whole set of properties for the radiology terms uh, that lets you uh, sort of uh, understand uh, which modality, the region imaged, and so forth according to that naming model, as well as the specialized properties for clinical document terms uh, that are available as well. So uh, today, if you want to sort of get all the info about your favorite LOINC term, you can use the code system resource and the lookup uh, operator and uh, put in your favorite code. And what you'll get back is, uh, you know, the, the JSON or XML or whatever uh, representation of that code with uh, that set of properties as populated by, uh, by LOINC. And so here you'll see some of the specialized things down here. Uh, it's returning the fact that the system or the specimen for this particular term is blood. And obviously, I cut off the example, but you'll get a whole big list of sort of everything we know um, about, uh, about that LOINC term from, in a programmatic sense. LOINC parts are represented as codes in that code system as well. And so you can pass in a, a, an LP code and get back its fully specified uh, name. Again, remember that those are LOINC parts are sort of the coded attribute values that make up an entire LOINC term. So it'll be an LP code for glucose or an LP code for sodium and so forth that's referenced in all the terms, the LOINC terms that might measure that particular substance. Um, we haven't yet implemented uh, the, the multi-axial hierarchy. Uh, so LOINC parts are used to construct a hierarchy. That particular element uh, of, uh, of LOINC isn't supported in our, in our fire services yet. Um, uh, Gram server does that. Uh, <laughs> um, LOINC parts are also used uh, in the value set res uh, resources where you can use them to help make inclusion and exclusion criteria. I'm going to show you that example in a second. And uh, we also have mappings using the concept map resource from LOINC parts to other terminologies such as to SNOMED CT as part of our collaboration with them from LOINC parts, uh, for example, in uh, drug toxicology testing where the component might be something that has a corresponding code in Rx norm. Uh, those uh, mappings are made available in that concept map resource as well. So just like we did uh, with, the, with the main LOINC term, you can say, okay, give me all the info that you have uh, sort of about a LOINC part by passing in the, the, the part code, and that'll give you back much smaller set of things that we know. So we know, you know the name for this particular thing is, uh, is sodium. Uh, answer list. So one creates these structured answer lists, as I mentioned. You can think of them as sets of allowed values for ordinal or nominal link terms. Some of them are defined intentionally, and some of them are defined extensionally. So a handful of uh, uh, link codes uh, link answer lists are defined by sort of pointing out to an external resource, say, where the set of answers is anything from ICD, right? We're not going to enumerate that in LOINC or create LA codes for them. We just sort of make an external uh, reference. But lots of other ones we've sort of enumerated out um, as, uh, as, as answer lists that are bound to these observation codes. And so uh, when you're trying to figure out, okay, if I have a, a list, um, how do I go back and forth between which, you know, LOINC code uses what list and for what list is it hooked up to different LOINC codes? You can do that in the code system resource. So when I pass an LL code to the code system resource, one of the properties it has is answers for, and that'll give you back the list of LOINC codes for which this thing is associated. Um, in a second, I'll show you the value set and concept map uh, resource uh, things that use LOINC answer list as well. So for example, uh, here I'm, I'm saying, okay, wh what LOINC codes is this list associated with? Okay, so I do a lookup pass to the code system resource for that LL LOINC list, and what I get back is, you know, the display name, but then uh, this, this actually goes on and on and on forever because it's part of a, a, um, an assessment instrument that uses uh, the same sort of standardized list for 100 or so questions. Um, but it, this says, okay, this list is an answers for this particular LOINC code, 703-01-7. All right, so that's sort of LOINC as a code system. Now let's talk about value sets or collections, subsets of, lo of LOINC content. And uh, as I mentioned, every answer list is available as a value set, so you can use the value set resource, pass it a LOINC list, and if you use the expand operator, that'll get you back the set of 
of allowed uh, response values. If you just want the definition of the value set, the, the, the resource, the whole resource, then you know, leave off the expand part. If you, but if you just want the expansion, add that on, and you'll get, uh, you'll get back, say, okay, this list contains, and of course it, it truncates off here, but you know, LA code for none and for few and for many uh, and so forth. I'll also mention if you're in the, not brand new to LOINC, but maybe moderately familiar with LOINC, something that we've been cooking for the last year and a half or so are these things we call LOINC groups, which is basically a way to define sets of LOINC codes that you can treat as equivalent for a particular purpose. So uh, this might be, I want to ignore fine-grained method details, or maybe I want all the tests uh, about, that are about uh, West Nile virus, regardless of whether they're quantitative or ordinal or whatever. Um, and so we've been going through a process that you can read more about, loink.org slash groups, uh, to define these sets of LOINC codes that we believe are useful for particular uh, clinical or uh, query-based purposes. And uh, through the great work of Rob Housem, we've been working to make these LOINC groups available as value sets as well. Uh, so LOINC groups are given an identifier uh, that start with the LG prefix, and uh, you can now sort of get back those value sets either as the definition or the expansion, which is that list of LOINC codes um, that fit into that group using the fire resource terminology. So here I passed it a particular group that was for Kappa light chains, and you can see it comes back with the set of LOINC codes that sort of fit that group uh, definition, and you can read about how we define the groups, the way that we name them, and so forth on the website. I won't go into that, but just know that uh, the groups are now available sort of in this uh, value set format. And of course, the way that we did it for building groups, you can also make use of as well if you want to build value sets based on the LOINC properties. One quick note is that if you're making a value set or something that's publicly accessible uh, with LOINC codes, uh, in the copyright element for the value set, you need to use this little uh, blurb, which essentially says, you know, this stuff is from Loink and it's available at no cost. Um, but there's a specific place that you can plug that in. And the same goes actually if you're writing your own implementation guide and you use the Loink codes in a bunch of places, you need like a little attribution uh, statement there. But say I want to make that same query that we were just talking about. I want to have all the Loink codes that deal with, uh, that are measuring something about West Nile virus, but I actually don't care about any of the other things except uh, now that I think about it a little bit more, I want to exclude uh, tests on a fetus or donor uh, or so forth, and so I want to make some exclusions there. Well, you can use the LOINC properties in that code system to build your value set. Um, and so you know, here's sort of an example of how you might start building that inclusion and exclusion criteria. And uh, if you do that, you can, you, can, uh, you can make it work and get back just that list of LOINC codes that fit those criteria. All right, uh, last resource we'll talk about are concept maps. So these are, again, ways to express mappings between codes in one terminology, i.e. LOINC, and terms uh, in another. And we have uh, been publishing mappings of various kinds as part of the LOINC distribution for, uh, for quite a while. And uh, we're sort of turning those now into concept map resources as well. So what uh, kinds of things do we have? Well, we've got links between uh, LOINC codes and IEEE codes as part of our partnership with the, uh, the devices group. Uh, we've got connections between LOINC terms and the RADLEX RPIDs, which were the uh, sort of now uh, superseded uh, RADLEX playbook IDs. There aren't gonna be any more of them created, but for historical purposes, it's useful to have that connection. So a connection between RADLEX codes and LOINC terms, as well as I mentioned, mappings between uh, LOINC parts and some other external uh, vocabularies uh, as well. So you can use that concept map resource as sort of a standard format to get linkages between uh, LOINC and other terminologies. For example, if you want the, the IEEE mapping, uh, you can just go to uh, you know, concept map and then put the name of it, and you'll get back that resource, which is kind of sweet. So it'll go through and list every LOINC code, and there's a, there's a source. Uh, and then a target, and you can say, okay, the, the first code, you know, I'm going from this LOINC code, uh, which is uh, oxygen partial pressure, to this particular IEEE code, which is, uh, uh, has, a, has a label that you can see here, and we've defined its equivalence, its mapping as being uh, equal, as opposed to broader than, narrower than, and so forth. And so all the mappings that we have 
you know, we aim to be able to make available in this sort of standardized format as well. So that was fun. Uh, I think uh, if I could give one take home message, which is that clinical data when coded with LOINC and made available and accessible through FHIR, a whole bunch of IT applications and innovation will be able to better understand and interact with that content for the benefit of many. And uh, I hope uh, you all are part of the, the, the group that is making this a reality. So thanks.